thanksgiving and his court with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. How many know we serve a worthy God on tonight? I'm talking about a worthy God. The God that woke you up this morning. Somebody ought to say thank you. The God that allowed you to put on your own clothes. Somebody ought to say thank you. The God that allowed you to have the activity of your limbs. Somebody ought to say thank you. We've come from no other reason than to give him worship and to give him praise. How many know that's why we come? We come to celebrate the man of God, but if it had not been for God himself, oh, come on, somebody. Come on, we come to worship tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. We're coming with worship and praise at this time. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan, you have to sleep.
we have come into this house to gather in his name to worship him. We have come into this house. We Praise 
that belong to you. Lord, we thank you for this occasion on tonight. For the honoring of our past, oh God. You said that the lamb is worthy of his high God. And we thank you tonight for our pastor for these two years that he has labored here with us. We ask you tonight, God, to bless him. Hallelujah. From the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, God. And look on his family on tonight, God. In the name of Jesus, you watch them over them, what they may be, God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for this women's apartment, God. We thank you for the leaders of this women's apartment, God. We thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing and what you will do and what you have done. We thank you all tonight, God. We ask you to be in this service, oh God, and everything that we do in the offering, oh God, in this reading of the scripture, and most of all, in your preached word on tonight, God. You bless that speaker on tonight, God, that the word will come forth, that it will break, break, break the bounds, that it will break the shackles, oh God, that grinds us down in the name of Jesus. And someone that's not saved on tonight, God, that they won't leave here the way they came, but they'll leave in Jesus' name, that they will give him their, their life on tonight. They'll give him the glory and they'll give him the honor and they'll give him the praise. And we ask all these blessings in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. We will have a reading of our Old Testament and New Testament scripture in that order from Sister Harriet White and Sister Christine Gray. I'll be reading tonight from um, Psalms uh, 105, 1 through 7. It says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people, sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye all his wondrous works, glory ye in his holy name, let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord, seek the Lord in his strength, seek his face forevermore, remember his marvelous works that he hath done has wonders and his judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Abraham, has uh, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Hebrews 12, 1 through 7. Wherefore, seeing we also are compressed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do us so easily beset us. And let us run this, run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My sons despised not that the chastising of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastiseth, and scourges every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastising, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chastiseth not? May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Tonight is women's night. Somebody say women's night. <laughs> Women, they, the, the, the men was on point last week. So guess what? We've come to celebrate our pastor for his second anniversary. Women, will you celebrate this man of God on tonight? Come on, celebrate him. Show him how much we love him. Amen. Amen. 
And we've come to celebrate tonight, amen, for the gift that God has given to us. Amen. Will you now join in in worship and in praise as the GCC Mass Choir comes at this time, the women's choir.
Jesus for yourself. Because when you know him for yourself, can't nobody, with just joy that you have, can't nobody take it away. How many know that the joy of the Lord is our strength tonight? How many know that the word says for the spirit of heaviness, you can put on the garment of praise? Hallelujah. Do you know him tonight? Hallelujah. We know him. I hope you know him for yourself. Amen. Amen. Will you please celebrate this woman's choir on tonight? We, we have a dynamic and, and awesome pastor in the time that I have been here. You know, I used to be in the uh, funeral industry, and I would sit in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of funerals. And I remember sometime I would sit there, and people would get up, and they would begin to give accolades about the person. And, and you, would, you, would, you would just almost want to wake the person up from the dead and say, Can I know you? Because you were just so moved by the love that people would share. You know what? We don't have to wait until he's gone. We don't have to wait until he's gone. We can tell him right now how much we love and appreciate the ministry of Matthew L. Brown. Amen? Amen. At this time, we are going to have our welcome and our occasion by Evangelist Tradine Miller. Uh, immediately following that will be our declaration by the women of GCC. Oh, come on and bless the Lord in this place. Bless the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I come before you to do the welcome in the occasion. You're welcome by the Spirit of the Lord. And the occasion is that we come to honor and celebrate the shepherd of this house. The greatest pastor on this side of heaven, Pastor Matthew L. Brown. Oh, come on and give it up. Y'all can do better than that. We come to celebrate him. We want to thank each of you for coming out. Feel free to get in the service. And remember, God, the Bible says, actually my son read it last week. God gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers to, for the edifying of the saints, for the perfecting of the body. This man has been a tremendous, a tremendous blessing to this house. I thank God because I can, I can go on and on before the things that he's done for me and my family. But I want y'all to just get in and celebrate not just him, but the God that's in him. God bless. Tonight, we the women of the greater community, Church of God in Christ, make our declaration. Specifically, we are making known publicly, asserting and agreeing with the word of God that death and life are in the power of the tongue. Therefore, we have called the women. We have called for the women of wisdom. We have called for the virtuous women, the praying women, the cunning women, the devout women, the faithful women, the benevolent women, the modest women, the humble women, the transformed women, the women chosen of God to declare the powerful spoken word of God to our pastor and teacher, Matthew L. Brown. Our women come waving their flags with significance and purpose. Our future flag represents joy, right relationship, and communion. Our gold flag represents eternal deity, 
the Godhead, sanctify, alter, holiness, righteous, divine light. Our purple flag represents royalty, kingship, majesty, mediator, wealth, and authority. And our white flag represents the Holy Spirit, blessedness, holiness, righteousness, saints' power, peace and pureness of the word of God, ensured by the blood of Jesus. Deacon Worthy, I am going to ask you if you will assist our pastor in bringing him in front of the white flag the word of God. Deacon Tim Worthy. I am going to ask that our congregation all stand. We, the women of Greater Community Church of God in Christ, will declare the word of God to our pastor. These are our instructions. When I raise my hand like this, you, the congregation, will say, we declare. Let's try it. We declare. We are going to declare the word of God over pastor. Teacher Matthew Brown. We are asking all of the congregation to repeat after me. Pastor Brown. Pastor Brown. Our support. Our support. Surround you with. Surround you with. With our love. With our love. And prayer. And prayer. 
We thank God for you. Now let's praise the Lord for the best pastor on this side of heaven. Praise the Lord for his mighty acts. Praise the Lord for who he has given to us. Oh, what a leader God has given us. Oh, what a leader that God has given us. What a special pastor the Lord has given to greater community, Church of God in Christ. Be blessed. Amen. What a wonderful tribute. What a tribute of truth. What a tribute of understanding for a man who does endow himself in the word. Amen. And if you know, I, I, when I first came here, I used to say, he must have a Bible in his pocket that just kind of goes from ear to pocket. Because ain't no way nobody knows scripture like that. But he is endowed in the word of God. And how many know that man cannot live by bread alone, but that every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And so we thank God that we have a pastor that not only comes with the word, but he rightly divides the word of God that it might be meat for our souls and we are blessed. Come on, tell somebody, and we are blessed. And we are blessed. <laughs> when you look at the TV, anybody seen anything on TV that made you look at other pastors and maybe you nod your head another way? Come on, tell somebody else. And we are blessed. And we are blessed. And we bless our God. Come on and put your hands together and bless God for what he has given us. Amen. At this time, our sister Benita Goodman is coming with a tribute. Pastor Matthew Lamont Brown. Trip I'm sorry. Tribute, as defined in Webster Dictionary, is something given or contributed voluntarily as due or deserved, especially a gift or service showing respect, gratitude, or affection. Something that indicates the worth, virtue, or effectiveness of the one in question. That's you. I thought the only way to do this briefly was to go down memory lane. You are trustworthy. Shh, be quiet. Then you're just talking to Mother Goodman. <laughs> Mother, may I go bowling with? Is Matthew going? Yes, yes, you can go. <laughs> she felt as long as you were there, you would make sure I was all right. Training. As young people, we were trained to work in the local, district, state, and national church. You did not take this for granted. I cannot remember the name, but it seemed like so many letters. The Y-P-P-B-M-N-A. <laughs> you, You were like the bishop. We had our own young church mother, etc. All offices were filled. We were operating in our own little meeting. My gratitude is more than I can tell or even express. When my dad passed, I did not worry. I knew you would bring order. Sure thing, you and Ron arrived straight from the airport, on time, bringing dignity and order to my dad's home going. The word of God, you have always had a passion for the word. Always a studier, someone who's good at articulating the word of God. Working in excellence, knowing that you are in God's service for God's people. When it comes to the Lord's Supper, church order and God's people, people may not understand when you do your eye.
or you do your hand and you give in direction. <laughs> they don't understand that you've been trained by the best. And you know how God's people should be treated and that God's house should not be treated any kind of way, that there's an order to operate in God's house. The man you are now, you were then. Your territory has just increased, and you have matured in God beautifully. To conclude, I have treated you like my girlfriend at times. I'm sorry. <laughs> no disrespect to the church, but Matt, you are my life friend, my brother, and now my pastor. Pastor Matthew Lamont Brown, I congratulate you on your second anniversary. I respect, appreciate, and am grateful for all you are and will be. I will continue to pray and encourage you. Love, Benita. What a wonderful, wonderful tribute from Sister Benita Goodman. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, we come tonight not just to tell him how much we love him. But we came to show him how much we love him. Amen. And it's offering time. It's offering time. Amen. Amen. Everyone knows what we've been asked to do to bless this man of God. And I know that we are going to do that and more. How many want to do that and more? Amen. Amen. Because you know what kind of uh, a giver God loves? He loves a what? A cheerful giver. So that we know that if we give, it shall come back to us. Amen. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. Amen. Amen. Will you please take your offering envelopes as the ushers are on the floor? If this offering that you are dedicating on tonight is for the pastor's anniversary, please indicate that on your offering envelope on tonight. Whatever you have, if you'd like to give some now, please indicate that on the line so it can go to uh, that funding that we will be giving to him for his second pastoral anniversary. Amen. Amen. And if you will please stand on both sides. Father, we thank you for this time of giving, God, for this time of impartation, God, that you have allowed us to be your vessels to show that, God, the love that you have shown through us. We pray now that each and every offering that comes to this table on tonight, that, God, it will be blessed. God, we pray that those that have to give and those who might not even have to give but have the heart and the desire that even on tonight, God, you would bless them. God, we pray that it will be food for his soul, God, that it will be fruit for his mind, that it will give him ease and in times, God, that he might be able to even do more for your kingdom. It is in the mighty name of Jesus that we ask and we pray this blessing on this offering this day. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said amen. Amen. Will you please stand coming from the rear as you are directed by our ushers. Come and bring your gifts unto the Lord.
many know that blessings and glory belong to him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. By way of announcements on tonight, I would just like to bring to your attention that uh, Mother Marthine Penn's sister, Sister Virginia Gilliam's homegoing service will be on this Friday at 11 o'clock at Cathedral of Faith Church of God in Christ. The bus will be leaving at 10 a.m. and there is a sign-up sheet in the Welcome Center. On this Friday night, the marriage ministry will resume at 7 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall and we're inviting that all married and engaged couples come out. This is a time of fellowship and a time to introduce yourself and meet other couples uh, in the fellowship. On this Saturday at 9 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall, all auxiliary and ministry leaders are asked to be present for the fourth quarter meeting. If you have not checked your mailbox, we're asking that you would check your mailbox. I said he got a walking Bible. I didn't tell you I knew how to read lips. <laughs> Amen. And the singles ministry, amen, will be on Friday night as well at 7 o'clock. Amen. If you have not checked your mailbox, auxiliary and ministry leaders, please uh, do so uh, and be present on Saturday morning uh, for the in the fellowship hall. And then on Tuesday night, October 15th, Pastor Brown will be speaking at the Kelly Lake Church of God in Christ in honor of Bishop Harper's 38th pastoral anniversary and 50 years in ministry. This wonderful Women's Day Choir, amen, will be accompanying Pastor Brown. And ladies, you are asked to please come to rehearsal tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Amen? Amen. Sign-up sheets for the van are in the Welcome Center. And we're looking to go with Pastor Brown, and we're looking to support him in a major way. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's almost time for the word of God on tonight. Amen? Amen. I'm going to do the introduction at this time, and then we're going to have um, our choir come back as we prepare our hearts and minds. Uh, our speaker for tonight is Minister Geraldine Young Washington. Uh, she is declared as a mighty woman of God who shares the relevant message of deliverance, hope, and healing through Jesus Christ to a hurting and a dying world. She is an ordained woman of God, yet her ministry has never been limited to the four walls of the church building. Uh, Minister Washington has taught Sunday school for over 45 years. She started the first Georgia and Montego Bay Jamaica women's delegates and many other credits to her, her numerous noteworthy things she has done. Uh, she is also among many roles. She is a mother. She's a wife. Uh, she is a nurse and a civil rights activist, a counselor, intercessor, a teacher. And over the past 50 years, she has fed and ministered to the masses. She has poured out her life serving and giving away of groceries, clothing, furniture, automobiles. Amen. Amen. And for over 30 years, she and her late husband opened their home to countless individuals who were sick, abused, widowed, jobless, or homeless. In addition to that, she has tangible expressions of love. She tirelessly continues to give of herself the words of her encouragement. Uh, she was born in Birmingham, Alabama, uh, during the South uh, civil unrest, charged with racism, separatism, and hatred. Yet instead of her eating the bread of bitterness, she began sharing the bread of heaven. Her place of ministry is not limited to family and friends but includes everyone, uh, where she continues to share her story, encouraging words, her affection, and even her sweet uh, confections of the glory of God. Tonight, we sit with our cups ready. Amen? Amen. We've come to hear a word from the Lord on tonight. And immediately following the selection by the choir, the next voice that you will hear will be none other than Minister Geraldine Young Washington. Somebody say, speak, Lord, for your servants hear it. Amen. Thank you. 
grateful, grateful we are. Lord, we are grateful tonight. It flows from our heart tonight, and for that we are thankful. To you be glory and honor, Father. We thank you for this evening. We thank you for this evening of celebration, Lord God. We thank you for our heart, Lord God, of celebration. We thank you for a pastor and a leader and a director, Lord God. A teacher, Lord God, and a friend, Lord God. We thank you for the word of God, Lord God. We sought your face, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, to speak tonight. Lift hearts, change lives. Let us leave here encouraged in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated this evening. You know, it's something to um, come and share the word of God and your pastor sitting right here. It's one thing to sit in our Sunday school class, and I'm blessed to have my Sunday school teacher here, Sister Ruth Eppinger. And I was trying to describe to my children that there's another Mrs. Eppinger, and that was my Sunday school teacher. And then I have my friend of over 30 years, Mother Eppinger. And then I have the director of this great church of women, Mother Nelson. And then we have our state leader. And I tell you, this church is blessed, Pastor. We have you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I'm going to just share some scriptures right quick because I think we need to hear what God would have to say tonight. If you would open your Bible to 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. And while you're turning there, I'm going to bring you briefly up to the par. David is about to be anointed king. He's called all his fellow brotherings to come to celebrate him. And I chose this particular brother or this particular of the brothering because of what they said. In this group of people, there were people who could shoot from both hands. There were people who were well-learned, and there were people who had gone through uh, to get water for the king. But there was only one who they spoke in a different light, and that's the sons of Issachar. And we're going to find out why and find out where we are. In First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 13, it says, And of the children of Issachar, which were men, had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. The heads of them were 200, and all their brethren were at their commandment. And I thought about that, knowing your times and knowing your seasons. You know, it's something to do the right thing at the right time. And so I thought about what James said. Let's look over here at James chapter 1, because we're going to see what God has said about us and what he wants from us tonight. I think there's something he wants to share with us. Lord, I thank you that you cause all things to work together. Verse 5 says, and if you like wisdom, let him ask of God. They give it to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavers like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. And so I began to search out the scriptures. I began to search out who were these sons of Issachar. Who were these people that they said that they had their brothers at their command? Who was a group of people that were different? So much so they weren't talking about their war skills, but they were talking about wisdom and knowledge. Who could this possibly be? And I went back and found out he was the son of Leah, the fifth son. Leah has sought her husband's heart, Jacob. She tried hard. She tried to win Jacob's love, but Jacob had his mind on Rachel. And so she, he just could she, you know, he looked at her and thought, oh. But she kept staying before God. Finally, she made up her mind. She says, this is my reward. I'm going to name you Issachar. I'm going to name you a son of Issachar. Judah had just been born right before then. She had the son of praise. And she finally thought to herself, you know what? I've got my reward. I can't get him, but I get the Lord. And so at some point in time, you think about where are you when you can't get the heart of the person you want. You'll get the Lord. You'll get that reward. And I think about some things. I want to share with you some things that I wrote down. If I can ever find them. I thought about Jacob. When I begin to go back and read about Jacob, it was kind of funny. I call it as the world turns. You go back in Genesis chapter 29. You want to read a story about a man. And about who he was with tonight. And who he bought. And who won him. Whose heart he was getting. And you think about a man that God would just not mark. You know, people mark you. You didn't come from my tribe. You're not with me. I don't know you. Where you come from? You know? And but yet Jacob said, this woman said to herself, 
I'm not going to waste my time anymore trying to win you. But Jacob said to him, or Leah said to herself, you, Issachar, you, Issachar, are my reward. And so we go through, we call uh, uh, Jacob the father of the, the father of the faithful. We think about a man who had the twi- 12 tribes, the 12 sons. And this one we're going to focus a lot on. But I just want to give you, he was the ninth son of Jacob because, you know, he had two wives, two concubines. I don't know what those were. I guess they called them girlfriends. But they came with their wives, you know. <laughs> Wouldn't have worked today in today's world. Wouldn't have worked. Just would not have worked. But he was the fifth child. You know, it just wouldn't work. And said, because somebody finna hurt somebody up in here. (laughs) In Issachar day, when when Jacob got ready to die, when Jacob got ready to die, he called all of his sons together. And of Issachar, he said in verse Genesis 29, he says, you are as a strong ass, couching between the sheepfold and, and a resting place. You know, he began to say things about him wasn't necessarily good, it wasn't too bad, but it wasn't, it wasn't what he said about Judah. But you know what? Jacob, Issachar himself must have done something. He must have done something even beyond what we have writing because you can't have wise sons and you can't have a wise seed if the daddy didn't do something. Something had to come from somewhere. So I'm going to give him some credit what I can find out necessarily out there. And wisdom is a principal thing, Proverbs says. Solomon says, above all, get wisdom. Get wisdom. You get a lot of things. I've seen a lot of people, all ages. Some are special. We call them special. That's a nice word for it. But they don't have any wisdom. Don't know how to operate. Don't know what to do. Buy beautiful homes. Duck, decorate them, but won't clean them. I can't figure that out either. I tell you. Have kitchens. Kitchens, you know, they'll tell you how many square feet the kitchen is. You you cook, oh, this is, and I think to myself, what an awesome kitchen. Oh, I see all these sinks. Oh, geez, I can be, like I can do a break dance. I see these, because I like to cook. And I said, they said, oh, you don't cook. You don't cook. You don't cook. Mm, Jesus, what do you need a kitchen for? You don't cook. But we're talking about a wise woman. We're talking about wise people. I'm going to switch it to the female part of this. I thought about something else that was so interesting to me about uh, seed. I thought about the first man, Adam. The first man, Adam, you know, he was of the natural flesh, made a mistake. The second man, Adam, rescued us. His name was Jesus Christ. Abraham had two sons, Ishmael and uh, Isaac. First man, second man. See, there's... we call, I call it the switching of the hands. Pastor preached that a few days ago about the switching of the hands. Isaac, uh, Joseph, had, Joseph had two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And then when, when his father, father and grandfather got ready to die, Pastor said it was tilted. The cross was tilted in there. I wrote that down, Pastor. And I said, I want to remember that. I thought that was awesome, you know, for this time and for this season. And I think about the second, Elisha came along. We, we read about Elisha. Elijah. Elijah did miracles. Ten, so we record in history. You want to count them? But Elijah got the double portion. There's always somebody coming right behind you. I call it right on your heels. You get through, you run all the race you got. And then somebody is right there waiting. They're going to right there take it. You couldn't go but so far. And then somebody comes along and take it to the next level. And so even with greater community, you ran well. But then God sent somebody else. God sent help. God sent encouragement. God sent a young man to run to take us to the rest of the rest of the distance. A few years ago, there was a song made by Dr. Pastor Paul Morton. I think it was about seven years ago. Seasons change. When it first came out, you know, it was exciting because it had good music to it. But in a little while, he lived that song. He lived the song he sang about. Lost his church. Lost his house, lost his cars, lost everything he had. Seasons change, saints. Seasons. And so it is with our church. God is birthed in something new. I was reading the other day of the morning, Isaiah 54. He says, enlarge your tents. Get ready. I said, get ready. He said, tell the saints there. I'm getting ready to not only enlarge the church, I'm enlarging the tents at their homes. I'm moving stuff. I'm changing things. I'm doing a new thing. I'm doing it. You know, and if... Now, I always think about, okay, 
said, Lord, that sounds really good. I wish the pastor would say it. I said, but I'll just share it and he can do what he wants to do with it. But I'm here to tell you, God is changing things. God is doing a new thing. God is doing a new thing. Many years ago, I want to stop here a minute to tell you about a testimony. A young girl was married, loved the Lord, lived in New Jersey, held a locket letter to the Lord. Uh, he was from Michigan, but he lived in, Detroit, in New Jersey. Let this young woman to the Lord, feel with the, got filled with the Holy Ghost, love the Lord. One believer hooked to an unbeliever, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, I can't begin to tell you. Had to, had to cry to go to church, had to press to get in, press to get out. Finally, after much abuse, I, after a while, I began to accuse the Lord. I said, look what you've done to me. You've given me the sentence of death. And I just, you know, I went to the pastor. I just stayed in the office. Okay, stayed in the office. Stayed there. Never been there since, but I stayed there during that time. <laughs> and one day it came to me. I, the Lord didn't give you that husband. You picked our curly head. You picked out that man. You didn't find out what drove the man. You, you picked what you wanted, and you got what you got. And so I thought about that. I mean, I said, well, Lord, if I picked him, if you don't mind, I'm going to give him back. And I just gave him right back. This ain't going to work because light and darkness won't fellowship together. This, somebody don't love the Lord, won't walk with me, praying, I'm fasting. He said, I don't want no fasting up in here. And so I said to myself, next time, Lord Jesus, if you don't mind, next time, if there be a next time, well, my, I got five children. My girlfriend said to me, have you looked around? Girl, have you looked at yourself? And I said, and what does that mean? She said, your day is over. I thought, how can my day be over? And she says, you got five children. And I thought, oh, does that mean anything? So I kept right on praising. I was in church every time the door opened. I didn't care what the service was. If they opened the door, I was there. Sometimes, even since I've been here, I get here so early, I get shamed. So I ride around. So nobody won't see me, you know. <laughs> Finally, one day I came in early, and Mother Eppinger and Elder Stewart was up here, and I slipped in, and she says, come on in and join us in prayer. I said, you don't mind? I said, all right. And I found a place. It's like I found a home. I found a place for myself. I said to myself, Lord, I thank you. I said, now, Lord Jesus, many years ago, when I... A young lady came to me. She said, Jerry, your name's Jerry? I said, yes. She says, um, the Lord wants you to have a husband. I thought, well, I'm about to believe it. The other lady had told me my day was over. I said, oh, and I thought, did I tell you I had five children? She said, and what does that mean? So anyway, to make a long story short, I'm going to put this real quick. I wrote down and I told the Lord, I said, Lord, would you send me a BMW? You said, what is that? I said, a black man working. I is a black man working. I said, if you don't mind, would you send me a BMC? A black man with Christ and credit, Jesus. I said, would you send me a BMT? A black man with talent. I said, if you don't mind, would you send me a BME? A black man with endurance. And so for 31 years, saints, you heard him talk about all the people. I had over 37 children in my home. I was keeping children for defects, but they forgot to tell me that they paid people. I didn't fill out no papers, and they didn't pay me. And so I didn't know no better. I was just glad to take the children. I thought I could make a difference. God had changed my life. He had blessed me coming in. He had blessed me going out. And so finally one day when my sister started working there, she says, well, you should be, did you fill out your papers? I'll take them back. I said, what papers? She said, you get a check. I said, get a check? They didn't give me no check. <laughs> but I tell you what, I want you to know when they don't give you a check, Talking about great God who looks down the line, remembers you. I look at my children and my children's children. I look at the blessings of the Lord that have made rich, that add no sorrow to it. I look at what he's done. He's, went, he's walked with me. He brought me. He kept me. 31 years, one man loved one woman and five children. He allowed me to bring everybody home. I, I tell him, I said, now this is so-and-so. He said, how long are they going to be here, Jerry? Don't have no, I don't have an idea how long they're going to be here. And some stayed a little longer than I anticipated, but we never put them out. I said, okay, Lord Jesus, help me, Lord Jesus. A few years ago, I'm going to tell you all something, saints. Two years ago, well, and I'll get to that last year, but two years ago, I faced a horrible time. Got a letter from I, 
R and S. Any y'all ever got one of them letters? Got one of them letters, and it was a mean letter. <laughs> mean letter. They don't know how to write nice. They wrote this woman, this God woman, a mean letter. And so I called her, and I, and they, they were, they still was mean. So I said, okay, Lord Jesus, I need some help here, Lord. Oh, Shonda, I won't work here, Lord Jesus. Help me. Help this woman. Help her. A wise woman in a time. You know, I need a time, need a wise word here. So eight or nine months went back and forth of our communicating with one another. Eight or nine months. I mean, I was up. Oh, Jesus. I mean, I was sweating bullets, you might call it. Lord, help me. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I mean, I was just walking through the house hollering the name of the Lord. Finally, I had set a date. August 8th, 2010. Told the lady we would make a decision on this date. <laughs> Called the lady. I said, Lord, Jesus, I don't know no more than I knew the first time I started this process. I didn't do it. All I could say was I didn't do it. You know, but they don't care. You signed the papers. I was in the hospital when them papers were signed. I'd have signed. I was in the hospital. The lady said, yeah, right. I said, I, I proved it. Look on, look on page so-and-so. I don't know. But nevertheless, I called that day. Call that day, saints. I'm talking about a great God who does great things for his children. It's called a life lived. Hallelujah. And I called the lady. I said to the lady, I said, uh, this is Jerry Coleman, Washington. And she said, what are you prepared to pay us? What am I talking? Nothing more than it was the last time when I talked to you, what I wanted to say. <laughs> but, but a wise woman, you see. So I said, she said, now tell me about your house. And I described it. How many cars? I said, well, there are three registered to my name. But my daughters and granddaughters in college got one. I, and I gave her that one. I gave my son another one. She said, I want, what about this one? And I said, well, ma'am, it's a good car. I wouldn't pay a dime for it, but it's a good car. It's a faithful car. I said, take me to church. Lord Jesus, I need my car. I need my car, Pastor. I needed my car. And she says, and about your house. We can get the equity out of that. All I could think of levy on this house. Oh, Jesus. And I tell you what, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you. So she said to me, I was talking to somebody out in Oklahoma, I think it was. And she said these words to me. She said, I'm going to take you off because they record your conversations in case you don't know that. She says, I, and I mean, I, she's reading off my bank account. She said, and what about this one? I said, well, if you look and you don't see but $20 over there, do you? <laughs> so anyway, to make a long story short, after we had talked back and forth, and I've sent them everything I had, I done prayed fast and shunned. I told the Lord everything I knew about myself. Lord, I walked before you. Lord, I walked before you. I guess he said, here she come again. She's going to say that. I said, yes, Lord, I walked before you. Yes, Lord. So that day they said to me on August 8th, so you remember, they call a, it's a marking time, Pastor. There's some things leave a marking time in your life. So then I said to her, she says, I'm taking you off a record. I thought, oh, Lord Jesus, she's going to get me now. <laughs> she says, I give you 10 years reprieve. Well, I knew a reprieve, man. I said, did the woman say she gave me 10 years of reprieve? I like the retarded people right then. She said, I'll give you 10 years reprieve. In 10 years, I'll review your case. And we'll see if you got any money then. I said, well, ma'am, I can send you $10. I went up from 10 now to 20. I said, I can send you 20 now. She said, you don't send nothing. I'll send you papers to follow it. You don't send a dollar. I hung up that phone. I went upstairs. I ate carpet. I just hollered. As best I could, I said, Jesus, serving the Lord, serving the Lord, a wise word in a wise time, talking about a great God, talking about I felt a new one Leah felt. I got a reward for all the meals, for all the people, for everybody I kept, I got a reward. A few years ago when my husband got me back, that up to tell you about another situation, talking about, wonder why that woman raised her hand like that. I know y'all wonder, wonder why she keep her hand like this. She just, it just go up automatically. When my husband died, he was 69 years old. 69 years old. In a month, he was going to be 70. He was a wise man. He took out insurance on the house, mortgage insurance. So if he died, he would leave me and the, cho you know, the grown children with a house, just in case they needed to move back home. And so I called Chase Manhattan Bank, told them, I got this policy here. You know, that's what we call it in the South, policy. I said, I got my policy here, and my house is paid for. 
How, what do what you want me to do to send you? They got back with me a few days. They said, for all intents and purposes. I remember those words. He was 70. I said, no, the death certificate says 69. Well, ma'am, in one month, he would have been 70. And for all intents and purposes, you're going to pay that mortgage or we're going to put you out. Now, the man just died. I grabbed the whole time. I said, oh, Jesus. Did that woman say she's going to put me out of my house? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. So I walked the floor. This poor woman cried. The Lord heard her. The Lord delivered her. Six months. Six months where two people were paying a note, Pastor. Two people were paying a note. One gone, check gone. I'm too young to get any other money from him. One check coming in the house. I had to take a job. And so I kept thinking, Lord Jesus, always better have a record. Saints, you got to have a record. You can't get the record. You better have a record. So I began to walk the floor, lifting it up. Lord, you see this thing? My husband paid for it. Have mercy. And the more I wrote, the uglier the people got. Chase was on my case one hour after the third day of each month. They was calling me, writing ugly. They were automatically. They just sent them automatically after the third day. In August, he died in June. In August, I got a call from an attorney. And if I called his name, he's the lead, one of the lead attorneys here in this county. He identified himself, told me who he was. He said, I'd like to give you, offer you my services. And I bagged up in the corner. I said, yeah, all right. I said, yes, yeah, sir. I said, but I can't pay anybody. Sir, I'm working just to pay the note. I have no money. He said, I didn't ask you about money. I'm going to take the case pro bono. He said, let me tell you another thing. I've never lost a case. I thought, this man sounded like Jesus. He never lost no case. <laughs> so he told me what papers to send him. But see, I had been calling on the telling the Lord, your name is wonderful. Your name is Counselor. Your name is Mighty God. Your name is the Everlasting Father. Your name is the Prince of all peace. Every morning, I guess he said, here she come again. I'm going to say the same thing. Your name is wonderful. Your name is counselor. Your name is everlasting father. You are the father. Either you will or you won't. But I ain't going to stop serving you. A rich or poor. Rich or poor pastor. I'll serve the Lord. I tell you, anywhere I go, I ain't come too far. Born naked, I came into this world. Naked, I leave. But Lord, they can't have my house. You got to do something. And that went on for months. So the man took the case. August. Never saw my face. Mailed him all the papers. Mailed him all these papers. Didn't hear anything from him. And that note was something. Something to pay a $188,000 balance. And I thought, oh, Lord Jesus, help me, Lord. And I was trying to smile. I was preaching everywhere. Somebody called me. Nothing was ever enough to pay the note. One day I got a letter from a church right up here on 41. says, we have no, our orphan came in for a widow. We have no what, and someone brought us to your attention. And I mean, they, no one, they, no way they come, people got to know my note. They sent me exactly what the note paid us. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, thank you for lifting that burden for this month. Okay, comes December. December, I had made up my mind. Gone far as I can go. Can't pay another payment. No more money. Talking about wisdom here. I said, Lord, I guess I have to, I can, got enough to live, to live in an apartment for myself. But you know, Lord, I've, I've taken in so many people. How many people have lived in this house? Oh, Jesus. I said, well, don't bother me. Gave it up. So on the 17th of December, get a call from this attorney. Geraldine, I wasn't happy. I'm going to be honest. I wasn't happy a lick. Wasn't no smile in my phone. I said, yes, sir. But my mother taught me respect. See, ain't nothing like respect. Don't nothing take the place of respect. I said, yes, sir. This is Geraldine. He says, we have a Christmas present for you. I thought some soap or a flower, probably a poinsettia. But I'm going to go get it, you know, because I got respect. And so he says, don't worry. The note, your mortgage is paid for. In a few days, you'll be getting a letter. He said, better still, I think they sent in a check. I said, pardon me? Pardon me, what did you say? He said, it's paid for. It's, it's a done deal. The problem was they didn't want to give you the money back that you paid. So you get that back. So I said, sir, he said, I'm going to have to go now. I hung up the phone, 
suffer with asthma? Jesus. An attack was coming on, Mother. Mother people, an attack was coming on. I tell you, I put my face in that carpet. I think I lit carpet. I hollered. I hollered. I hollered. Oh, Jesus. Hey, so my mama did you see here. Hey, my mama did you see here. Hey, La Sonda. Hey, it paid for me. All the years. All the years of cooking. All the years of taking care of God's people. All the sacrificial giving. All the years. Paid for Jesus. Paid in food. God came to my rescue. God remembered my brother. He remembered me. He looked down. God looked down on the little country girl. Eugene Bull Connor. Put the water hose on this woman. But today he dead. Hallelujah. But I'm here. Hallelujah. House paid for. Thank you, Jesus. I'm telling you about a great and awesome God. There's nothing. I'm talking about nothing. My daughter went that next month with me. By this time, I've had pneumonia, Pastor, because you can holler so much your lungs collapse, you know. She was helping me up the stairs. I look like ain't your mama's mama. I walked in there. The daughter, that's my daughter right there laughing. And she was trying to fix me up because they're always trying to fix me up. You notice I don't look like her. But she is the Secretary of State of the state of Georgia of all the realtors. So she has to look that way. And I'm just mama. So anyway, I, she took me and she was fixing me up. So I walked in there the best I could. You couldn't help me. The way I look, you just couldn't help me. You just, you know, some folks you just can't help. So I walked in there and they took me to the, took us to the boardroom, right? And they, then they all, they came in and spread out this envelope, all these checks. The attorney made them give me back my stamp money. Five stamps. One check. I had done an electronic transfer one day out of desperation so I wouldn't be late because I need to keep my rating, you see. I had done an electronic transfer. He, what, that was a separate check. Then there was a check for all them five, them six notes that I had paid. And then there was a check for $188,000. Nobody's name but mine. To God be the glory, Pastor. Hey, tell my mother this. Wisdom in the time. Wisdom, saints. Wisdom. So I said to God, to you be glory. To you be honor. To you be glory. All the cars my husband had given away. We, we, the reason we started giving them away, I'm going to tell you why we started giving them away. We sold one to a family member. I don't have to tell you how that went. <laughs> Early over 30 years ago, who forgot to pay. So rather than fall out with people, my husband said, from this day forward, we're going to give them away. We ain't going to never sell another car. We're going to give every last one of them. My son, he said, have we ever, give, have we given them all away? Every last one of them. I said, I, and most of them, when I get one, the children lay came, oh, I want that one. I want that one because they know I'm going to give it away. And they weren't all to family members. It was given unto me. But you can only get back what you seated. You can't get back what you meant to give away. You they can't get back what you meant to do for people. You ain't got time for people. Ain't nobody will have time for you. I'm here to tell you, Pastor Brown, when I walked in here last year, I remember you preaching one message. I was so excited. I was so sick. You know, I can't tell you last year, this time last year, I was on a walker at my daughter's house. Her and my son-in-law put a bell on a walker so they could hear me. Sick, and if the, the enemy said, we got you now. You will die this time, Geraldine. I said, not so, not so. I ain't scared of dying. I'm not scared of dying, but not so. You got to make up your mind, not so. And I put my leg on that walker and I push it, Lord. And I look in the mirror one day, I said, girl, you scared me. And I said, okay, because I didn't, I looked even worse than I normally would look, you know. And I said to myself, Lord, you can't leave me here. You can't leave. I can't even die looking like this. You got to do something, my Lord. You just got to do something. Little by little, mercy, new mercies I saw. Day by day. I felt strength coming. I felt myself getting stronger. I felt myself gaining my strength. One day I put on some high heels. It come January. And my daughter said she heard me stepping out the house. 
I was trying to be quiet. Oh, Jesus. She said, Mother, I heard you with them heels on. And I got, when I got in the car, I said, Shonda, oh, Jesus. Whoa, Jesus, the restore. He restored your soul. He'll make the, you'll make your whole. I'm here to tell you. Sakes, I'm going to tell you. I tell women all the time, quit worrying about what Joe drive and find out what's driving the man. Quit worrying about me and did she cute because cute don't last. Cute is as cute does. You better find out do she love a mom and a daddy. You better find out will she wait on you. You better find out if you holler in the middle of the night, is she going to run or run, turn over. You better know what drives the person. We placed our, our values on so many of the wrong things. And we've not looked deep. I give Maybelline, Judge Maybelline that credit. She says, look deep for your leap. You better look deep. And so, Lord, I thank you. When I didn't know how to look deep, didn't know how, nobody was teaching me at that time. I said, but Lord, all I knew was to ask God for help. Ask the Savior to help you. I sit in this little section all the time. And I sit there because they haven't run me out. Because ever a woman can't sing, is me. Do I know all the verses? Well, my little sister that sit with Know all the verses, don't know all the verses. <laughs> can't sing now, son. But know all the verses. That's people like that. But I sing with my hand because it's my heart. When he would have done for you. What he done for me. He picked me up. I was lost and undone. Without God or his son. But he reached down with his hand for me. Nobody would sit by me. I looked so bad. Five little children sitting on the road. And the Lord came by. Sit somebody. Put his cloak around me. Dress me. Fix me. Pull me up. And then restore me. What God does for one child, I too am a parent. I, too, am a parent. And what I do for one, you do for all. There's no way what God has done for me. Women that he won't do for you. He will not leave you. He said, I'll never leave you. I will not forsake you. Lo, I'll be with you always, even until the end of the world. I'm whole. I'm complete. Lord Jesus, God has held me in the palm of his hand. I thank God for tonight. I praise you. I praise God for a pastor. I kept thinking, Lord Jesus, what can you say about a man who has shown kindness? I was so glad when I heard he was coming. I was at his, I call it coronation, but his ordination when they, at the church at Pleasant Grove, when he was made pastor officially of this church. I sat there, my cousin, I called him Cousin Glennie, who was bishop, but he was, I call, to us, he's Cousin Glennie. And he said, Jerry, I want you there. I said, boy, you know, I don't go well, hop churches. I just don't hop churches. He said, but you're going to need to be here. I said, thank you. My granddaughter kissed her visiting over here. And next thing you know, she said, grandmother, you need to come over here with me. I said, you Joan? She said, not yet, but you need to be over here. I said, mm-hmm, I don't hop churches. I told the pastor, the church door closed. I was at a church, the church door. I missed one Sunday. It had nothing to do with me. They closed the church. I said, honey, close the church. I told him, I said, I came. I've been coming for Wednesday night. I've been coming for a long time. He never did bother me. Just let me sit there. I come in, slip in and slip out. I'm trying to get other people to be the member. I guess he said, if it's so good, I think, no, he busted. said, why you ain't here? But I didn't believe in switching. But I'm going to tell you something. You better know the time and the season. Because sometimes you're holding up a blessing. Sometimes you're holding up what God is trying to do with you. I go in my Sunday school class. I, I tell the folks, I told mother one day, I said, you know, I do a break dance. She said, you do? <laughs> I said, well, not really, but that's the way I feel. My heart gets so excited. It's like it can't contain itself. I said, I thank you for letting me be in here with you all. This is a lovely class. For those of you who are not members of Sunday school, I'm going to tell you you're missing something. You're missing that bond, that unity. That group of people that you can just share your heart, that come to know you in an intimate way. And so, Pastor and to Mother tonight, because I went over there to visit them one night, but they knew I belonged somewhere else, so they sent me right back. I thank the Lord for you all. I appreciate you. Greater community, God did say. Isaiah 54. I want to read that to you as my closing tonight. I want you to hear it, because I know you forgot. Things looking bad, looking bad in Washington, but ain't got nothing to do with the Lord. It ain't got nothing. A woman walked in tonight, had a testimony to tell me that God had delivered her son in a 
great and marvelous way in five minutes. His life changed for the better tonight in five minutes. So it says, verse 2 says, enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtain of thine habitation. Spare not, lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes for thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left. And thy seed, your children, what we talked about earlier, shall inherit the Gentiles and make desolate cities of the inhabited. God bless you tonight. What a powerful word. What a powerful word we have heard on tonight. The wisdom of God. Nothing like it. Nothing we can buy. Nothing we can manufacture. But it comes only from God. God is doing something different. He's doing something wonderful, incredible, and awesome. And all we have to do tonight, as the sister told us on tonight, we got to be in the ready position. Last night I, I attended How Sweet the Sound, and there was a group that was there that won on last night. The group that won, when they asked them, because they were so phenomenal, how long have you practiced? They said, we practiced last night. Because you know what was clear and evident? They didn't wait until the phone call came. Because they was a fit-in. They wasn't even supposed to be there. But they were practicing for the promises of God. And that's what God is saying to us every day. We got to be in the ready position because no man knows the day nor the hour. Every day we got to be in the ready position to say, Lord, any way you bless me. I said, any way you bless me. Come on, any way you bless me. Any way, God. I may not understand with tears rolling down my eyes. Any way you bless me. With body filled with pain. Any way you bless me, God. Hallelujah. 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 God can do it on tonight. God can do it on tonight. How many know we serve a God that can do anything? I said anything, anything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He can do anything, anything but fail. Will you grab the hand of your neighbor as we stand to our feet and petition the Lord on tonight? Will you squeeze the hand of your neighbor as you hold their hand? Squeeze their hand as a sign that you are squeezing the hand of a miracle. Ha! Ha. If he's healed your body, squeeze that hand of of a sign that, that you know him as a healer. Testify through the squeezing of that hand that you know him as a way maker. Squeeze that hand as a testimony that should know him as one that'll keep you in perfect peace. Hallelujah. Squeeze that hand that you know when it seems like all is up and all is done that he may not come when you want him, but he comes right on time. Squeeze that hand and testify to your neighbor. If it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, I don't know where I'd be, locked up behind prison walls, but God, I could have lost my mind, but God, hallelujah. And so God, whoo, oh God. Hallelujah. 
tonight God and God we receive it we receive the word that we know that you're the same God yesterday today and forevermore so now God as we stand under the open heaven we ask that you send your glory in the room send your anointing in the room God whatever your people need God God let them know that they can have it tonight because you are God, great God, God full of power, God mighty God, God that is the God above all others, and we bless you tonight, and we bless you tonight, so now God we give you worship, God we give you glory, God we give you honor, God we give you praise, we're not going to wait until the battle is over, but we're going to bless you right now. We're going to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Oh, hey. No other name, no other name, no other name than Jesus. The sound of that name, demons tremble at the sound of that name. Jesus, my sweet rose of Sharon. Jesus, the lily of the valley. I dare you to call him whatever you need. Jesus, Jesus, we need you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! God tonight we just want to let you know God that we're giving you a yet praise we're giving you an in spite of praise we're giving you we know you can do it praise and so we put our hands together and we bless your name and we bless you and we bless you and we bless you hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If there be one under the sound of my voice that does not know the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in your life on tonight. See, you can only live that life and you can only walk that walk that, that the sister spoke on tonight as if you know him. You may say, sis, I, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm on the fence. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in and out. I'm, I'm kind of not doing all that I should do. You may be in a place where you say, I just need somebody to pray with me on the night. If that's you, make your way to the altar. Because we're getting ready to have a praise party in here. Come on. For all the things. 
Come on, if that's you, come to the altar. Washington. When I was looking for somebody to speak, I had somebody else in mind. But a couple of Wednesday nights ago, I walked in and she was sitting over there and the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, ask her to speak. And I enjoyed her tonight. God knows what he's doing if we'll get out of the way. I thank the Lord for Ella Brown tonight and all he has been to us these last couple of years. And I want to disagree with Sister Joseph a little bit. She says, any way you bless me, but be specific. Ask him what you want. Tell him just what you want. Not just any way, but be specific. God, I know him as a healer. I know him as a deliverer. He's touched my body so many times. Some folks would have been dead and in the grave, but he said, not yet. So many times I've been sick enough to die, but he said, not yet. confessed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. We got a lot of witnesses in the scripture 
where they obeyed God. And then it says, let us lay aside every weight and sin that does so either beset us. Let us strip down. When people get ready to run a race, they, bat, they get down to the minimum so they don't have nothing to hold them back. So let's strip down and get ready for this race. Take off everything that will hinder us, and let's go with the Lord. Be encouraged, Elder Brown. God bless you. Hasn't this been a wonderful night? Has the Lord not met us in this place? Amen. Pastor Brown, we just want to encourage you again that we just appreciate you and we love you so much. We can't say that enough because you have impacted each and every one of our lives, both individually and collectively. And for this, we say thank you. Every heart and mind is clear. We'd like to now take the opportunity to open the doors of the church. If there would just be one person that would say, I would like to be a part of this church. Can I tell you that we are not a perfect church? But here's what we do have. We serve a perfect God. There's nothing like being a part of a family where love can be found. And this is the place where love can be found. If you would like to be a part of this church family, we invite you to come now. Join hands with our pastor and become a part of the greater community, Church of God in Christ. Come on, greater community, celebrate in here. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Come on, celebrate. He is doing something wonderful in me. What a wonderful expression. Is doing something Will there be another art tonight? In me. Something awesome and incredible. For only he will get the glory. God is doing something wonderful. Incredible and awesome. God is doing something wonderful in me. I want to tell you that sister Sean. Jackson wants to uh, join greater community and because her other mom, Mama Jerry, shared the excitement. That's how churches grow. We, we can do all the advertising we want, but until people that are here share the story and convince others in their, in their lives that this is the place to be then it will not happen. We are delighted to extend to you the right hand of fellowship and to welcome you to Greater Community Church of God in Christ. May the blessing of the Lord be with you. Our own sister Kate Philpott will get some information from you. Come on church, give her a great God bless you. Amen. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may he rest, rule, govern, and abide with us both now, henceforth, and forevermore. And the people of God said amen, 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 amen. and amen. Something wonderful, incredible and awesome. God is doing something wonderful in me. God is doing something wonderful in me. God is doing something wonderful in me. Something awesome and incredible, where only He will get the glory. God is doing something wonderful, incredible and awesome. God is doing something wonderful in me.